Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have another Photoshop tutorial for you. This one in particular I'm pretty excited for. It's one that I've received a lot of requests on and it's actually much, much simpler than it looks, but there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. In fact, the process for this one is pretty similar to what we did in the last tutorial. It's just a little bit different, but we're gonna be using a lot of the same effects. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing you're gonna to want to do is obviously create a new project. I like working in a square format for whatever reason, as you may or may not know. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 2000 by 2000 with a resolution of 300 because we obviously want it to look as nice as possible. Uh, obviously you can make this whatever size you want, but like I said, I'm gonna use 2000 by 2000, 300 resolution. Go ahead and create a new project. And so the first thing we're going to do is just like the last tutorial, we simply only have two assets for this. Uh, we have the picture of the spaceman in question that I'm gonna go ahead and drag into our project. And then I'm going to go ahead, scale him up, place him where I want him to be, all nice and pretty. And then the second image that we have is actually the same image that we used in the last tutorial. Uh, we're gonna be pretty much doing the same 3D effect that we did in the last one. And I really like this image for whatever reason. I think this image works really well for the 3D effect that we want, so I'm just gonna continue using it. I like this image a lot. You can obviously use whatever one you want. Sometimes this takes a little bit of experimenting to see which photos work the best. I use this one all the time as there's a lot of use out of it. So we're just gonna continue using this one for now. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to match the color of this image to the colors of this one. Now you could go ahead and kind of color correct this image how you want if you don't like the way it looks for some reason. I usually save that stuff to the end. So what I'm gonna do now is do my best to kind of match the color of this overlay that we have here with the colors in the Spaceman photograph. So to do that, I'm gonna take a similar approach to what I did in the last video. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just mess around with the hue and saturation a little bit, get that red in there. And then we're also going to create a new layer, switch the blending mode to color, and then using our eyedropper tool, we're gonna to go ahead and select this nice orange off the helmet turn the visibility of this back on, switch to our brush tool by pressing B, and then we're also going to bring the hardness down to 0%. And the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this layer above the human saturation or else it's going to affect the color of the layer below it. And so we're just gonna go ahead, paint some of that orange on over here, and then turn the visibility of this off, <clears throat> grab our eyedropper tool again, maybe grab some of this blue, Turn this back on, go back to our layer, switch back to our brush tool, add some of the blue back in, and then we can pull up our eraser, bump the opacity of that down, and just kind of work on blending it a little better. We want some of those blues, some of those oranges, definitely want some of that red as well. And even if this doesn't necessarily turn out the way you want it to be, you can still go back and edit the colors as much as you want. So I'm just gonna spend some time messing around until I get the colors to where I want them to be. All right, so once you're satisfied with that, you can go ahead and merge all of your kind of color correction layers together. And then we're gonna do pretty much exactly what we did in the last video, where we go up to 3D, new mesh from layer, depth map two, and we're gonna go to a plane. And then once we have that, uh, you can see we have this cool looking explosion. And just to make it a little bit, look a little bit nicer, we're gonna go ahead and turn the shadows off. And then we're also gonna go up here to presets and we're gonna go ahead and change that to unit texture if your computer ever loads. Sweet. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of position the explosion, so to speak, in the way that we want it. And so what I do here is I kind of just match it to you know the direction that the helmet's facing. Uh, as you can see, he's kind of looking down and to the left. So we're gonna to wanna to kind of go in and have the explosion follow that similar pattern. And so this is just going around, finagling with it a little bit, getting it to where you want it to be. All 
All right, and then once you have it where you want it to be, you're just gonna go ahead, go over here and convert this to a smart object. And then once that's done, we're gonna go back up to window, workspace, switch it back over to essentials default. Because when you create that 3D mesh extrusion, it automatically switches your uh, workspace to the 3D workspace. And so just so all our shortcuts stay the same, we're gonna go ahead and switch back over to uh, essentials default just to make our lives a little bit easier. And then the next thing we're gonna do, uh, I talked about this in my last video, but just because we're gonna be editing these two images a lot now, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate both of them just in case I, you know, go too far and, you know, need to go back. I can just go ahead and have them there as basically a safety. That's just the way I like to do things. And then the next thing we're going to do is now we obviously want the explosion to look like it's coming out of the helmet. So we're gonna go ahead, turn off the visibility of our explosion layer, and then we're gonna go ahead and basically mask out the shape of his helmet right here. And so to do that, we're gonna go ahead and grab our pen tool, switch this up here instead of shape, we're gonna switch that to path. And then basically you're gonna go through and mask out or trace out this uh, helmet visor thing, whatever you wanna call it right here. Also another thing, so like right now, if I wanna connect this line to this line, it does that, it creates this curve automatically. So if you want to avoid that, if you hold down Alt and click on the point, it now gets rid of that extension handlebar, whatever you wanna call it. And now if you click up here, it's gonna create that nice straight line, just like you want it. So once you have the outline created, you're gonna go ahead and press Control Enter. That's gonna turn that into a selection. You might, and so you might wanna zoom out to check and see. So right now, what it's selected is this area around here, but we want the selection to be right here. So you're just gonna press Shift, Control, I, that is going to invert the mask. So now the selection is in here. All right, and so now that we have this selection created, we're gonna go ahead and toggle the visibility of our explosion layer back on. And then on here, we're gonna make sure this layer is selected and then create a layer mask. And so now you see you have the explosion in the helmet. If you want to move it around a little bit, uh, if you don't like where it's placed, unlink the layer and the layer mask, and now you can go ahead and kind of move it to where you want it to be. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and link those again. And then basically we're gonna kind of do a similar thing that we did with that planetary explosion, where now we're just editing the mask to make the explosion look like it's naturally coming out of the helmet. And so to do that, you're gonna select your brush tool again, and so basically the way this works is black is going to erase your layer mask, whereas white is going to add more to it. And so basically you're gonna take the white on your layer mask, so make sure the layer mask is selected. And then you're just gonna kind of go through and make it look, you know, natural, kind of extend that layer mask so it's coming out of the dude's helmet. And then if you want to get rid of some of these outside edges or if you, you know made it go too far, you can just go ahead, switch the foreground layer to black and that's going to go ahead and erase it there. And so basically what you're doing now is just fine tuning the edges, making it look how you want it to look. And then another thing is for stuff like right here, it kind of helps to bump the opacity of your brush down. That way you can kind of have it blend into the background around it. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm not gonna spend too much more time on it just for the sake of this tutorial. And as you can see, you know, the colors matched up pretty well. If you wanted to go back and, you know, add those or edit the colors of this, you can do what we did earlier. We create a layer above this one. Go ahead and switch that to color. And then go ahead and it's like, let's say you want some more orange. So we can go ahead, add some more orange in. And then we can go ahead and kind of blend that a little bit better. As you can see, there's not really any blue over here. So let's go ahead, grab our eyedropper tool, get some of that blue, switch back to our brush tool, add that in over here. And then once you're pretty happy and satisfied with that, the other thing you'll want to do, as you'll notice, 
uh, I'm coloring on top of this image as well and we don't want that. So you just go ahead, right click on this, you know, color layer that you created and you're gonna go ahead and create a clipping mask. That way it's only applying to this uh, explosion that we want it. And so overall, I mean, that looks pretty darn good. The next steps that you're pretty much going to take is just do any kind of color correction that you wanna do. If you wanna completely mess with the hue and saturation and get different colors, like if you want greens and purples, you can go ahead, just go through and kind of mess with that as well. <clears throat> Obviously, once you do that, you might have to do some other, you know, fine adjusting. And that's basically the step we're at, is just those fine, fine tuning details, small adjustments, you know, personalizing it and making it however you want it to look. Like I like to go through and darken these edges and backgrounds. You might want to go through and touch up the edges here to make it, you know, look <laughs> as clean and as nice as you want it to. And as you can see, compared to the original one I did, the explosion and shape of it's a little bit different, but they both kind of work. Uh, another cool thing that I always like to do is if we go up to adjustments and go to color lookup, there is a bunch of pre-made filters that can uh, do some really cool things sometimes. Some of them don't look that good, but some of them do look really good. So <laughs> this is kind of the final step I always do is I'll just go through and see if I like the look of any of these filters. And then if I do like it, I'll just, you know, go ahead and stick with that. But yeah, I mean, that's essentially it. There's not really much to it. It's a lot easier than it looks. I know this looks really complex, but it's actually super, super simple. And this can be applied and done to just about anything. If you wanted to do a photo of your face, if you wanted to uh, do it to some other kind of helmet, I have other examples of these that I've created. It's basically just a matter of creating this 3D explosion using the 3D tools up here and then masking out the shape of the helmet, the face, whatever it might be, and then just messing around with the layer mask to make that explosion look more natural and in uh, belong to the scene that it's in. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. It's one that a lot of people have been asking for. It's a project that I had a lot of fun with and I'm really excited and happy to be sharing with people. If you do have any questions, uh, if I happen to gloss over anything and you're wondering how I did something, go ahead, let me know in the comments below. This is my second Photoshop tutorial. I'm still, you know, maybe a little bit rusty in some areas getting there eventually, but surely. And so excited to be bringing you more. If there's anything in particular that you'd like to learn how to do, go ahead and let me know. I'd be happy to do my best to do so. Basically my approach to these tutorials are gonna be, I'm just gonna show you how I pulled off certain effects or looks or styles. So if you wanna check out my art page, go ahead and do that. And if there's something in there that catches your eye, they're like, hey, I wanna know how to do that. Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to show your appreciation by hitting that like button. If you want to see more tutorials, go ahead and subscribe. And if you know of anybody that would love to see this video, go ahead and share it with them. I've greatly appreciated all the support and kind words you guys have given me so far, and I'm excited for what's to come. Thanks for watching.